All right, let's move into uh, a, another topic that is a little more somber, um, not one that you want to talk about on a Monday. No, but, but you, you lived an unbelievable life. I don't know that the certainly. end of someone's life is always somber. Uh, rest in peace, Pat Dye, uh, Auburn coach from 1981 to 1992. He was the uh, athletic director at Auburn from 81 to 91. Uh, he had a 99, 39, and 4 record in 12 seasons. He had it, at least a share of the SEC championship. This is before the SEC championship game. In That's 83, right. 87, 88, and 89, his Auburn teams won at least 10 games in a season, four times, went to bowl games six times. Now, back then, it was not as easy to get to a bowl game. That's right. That's uh, right. He was three-time SEC Coach of the Year, 1983 he uh, National Coach of the Year, excuse me, coached a Heisman Trophy winner, Bo Jackson, in 1985, an Outland Trophy and Lombardi Award winner, Tracy Rocker, in 88. He had 21 All-Americans, 71 All-SEC players, and 48 academic All-SEC players. Um, he goes to East Carolina. He was at Wyoming. Um, he was, you know, he was incredible. And he was such an incredible personality. I think the thing that Auburn will remember him most for is that he is the coach that finally got the Iron Bowl moved away from Birmingham, which yep. at the time was a seismic advantage for the University yes. of Alabama. Uh, he got it moved back to not back to, but moved to home and, uh, home. home and home. And they finally got to play Alabama at Jordan-Hare, and it was a So I went, I was 15, 16 years old? 16, maybe. I don't know. I was in 10th grade. Let's, whatever, however <laughs> the hell old I was then. Um, when uh, I went to the Iron Bowl at Legion Field, I had my dad somehow got tickets, and it was one of the things he wanted to do for my birthday. And so me and a buddy, Justin Moss, um, went to Birmingham and uh, and met up with my dad and his cronies, and we pretty much just hung out together by ourselves all day. Neither one of us Bama fans, neither one of us Auburn fans, but at an event that we thought was cool to go to for a college football fan. And, yeah, it's 100% Bama fans. And, like, I, we saw very few Auburn fans there. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap. And that at that point in time, that's like early 90s. This is not – dominant Alabama that we know of today this is those teams are pretty neck and neck oh yeah and it's still dominant Alabama fans and I I kind of used to think why why did why do they not just play at home and they they moved know. it to Tuscaloosa for the Alabama side because in in the 90s Alabama played their home game against Auburn at Legion Field and yeah. it made sense because Legion Field at the time held more people Right, it's yes, it did. Yeah, that's right. Before Um, Tuscaloosa happened, and then of course they did the renovations in '98 into the '99 season. Uh, 2000 is when they really started uh, all of that. But yeah, 2000 was the uh, the first one where you know they had Auburn on campus, and 2000 was a bad year. Mike Dubose and that bunch. uh, I I sat in the rain in 2000 and watched Tommy Tuberville hold up them fingers and. I got it. To, I was I was very upset with it. It was nine to nothing was the score, and it was pouring rain. We sat in the rain and watched that dreadful three and eight Alabama football team. It was awful. It was awful. Um, I, I I do think Bama won the year I went. I don't remember. I don't remember a lot of that trip. I remember hanging out with my buddy more than I remember the game. Um, but I, I do remember it was perfect weather. Like the, the like Brown we Yeti. brought jackets and we didn't bring them at all. Oh yeah, I mean it's a it, Birmingham. It, it really in November, like in Alabama, typically no, really wasn't bad weather. Really yeah. went, here, I feel like Memphis is always rainy and nasty, and we're, we're three yeah. hours away from them. But anyway, their weather was great that day. It was just perfect fall yeah, day. It, it all depends on the day, obviously. The Brown Yeti right. said, "Do you think it would matter today?" And I'm not sure what he's talking about. If you could expound, if it on was that. played neutral side, I think I think, I think if, if it was played, played neutral side, would it matter today? today maybe is what he's asking. Uh, well, yes, because it Auburn 100% has would. Auburn's won a national title. Auburn's a, this still in Alabama. Access to tickets? No, a hundred percent. Bama would still overrun that place. They've got more money and they've got more people. Yes, I, I think it would matter today because I, I think there is something – there is a mystique about Jordan-Hare Stadium. And you well, can ask any fan Birmingham, of the SEC. Birmingham was a place where Alabama played some home games. Yeah, I mean, that, they played two or three like, a year. You, you, you can't say we play two or three games a year here and then we're going to play one neutral site game here and the other team coming for the neutral site never plays a game there. Like, 
that's just that's just not realistic to exactly. ask the other team to bring half the fans. It's just not normal. No, no, it's absolutely not normal. It's which is why people in the yeah. SEC have a gripe that the SEC headquarters being in Birmingham in a place where Alabama played home games for yeah. twenty years. Yeah, that's uh, a well problem. longer than that, really. I mean, they played in Legion Field forever. Um, so. But yes, it's it's a little. It is what it is. I mean, you know, Pat, that was amazing. The yes, fact he was. That, what I know about him is from Bo Jackson. The things that I have read and studied, Bo Jackson is, was, and probably always will be my favorite college football player of all time because he was the the hero of my youth. Yeah. Okay. There's something about falling in love with a guy when I'm six years old, nine years old, whatever, that matters so much more than falling in love with a guy when I was 17. You know, that it's just, it doesn't, you're never going to love something at 17 the way you did at nine when we're talking about these types of things. Well, those, those are the uh, the years where you grow your sports fandom. It's it's between that, eight and, and 100%. 12. Um, so that's that's where you become a massive fan of certain teams. You know, it's, it's how I became Correct. a Steelers fan. It's how, you know, all that kind of mess, right? So it, it is what it is. Um, the Pat Dye thing, you know, obviously... Uh, he is just an incredibly well-respected uh, oh, member of yeah. the SEC community. And, you know, it, it was a shame he went out uh, from Auburn the way that he did, uh, you know, at, under scrutiny of NCAA violations, all, all that different kind of mess. Uh, but when it comes down to it, he was incredibly successful as a coach at Auburn. He, uh, he came from the Bear Bryant coaching tree. I mean, he, he was an assistant coach at Alabama before he ever got his first head coaching job um, and then took over. At Auburn, I mean, after, back back in that day, that's how rival coaches got their jobs. By the way, yes. like we forget, like Woody Harrelson and Bo Schembechler, like like Woody Woody coached for Bo, yeah. and he left there to go to Ohio State because Ohio State was like, "Hey, man, we can't beat these guys. Let's hire their defensive coordinator, and then maybe we can beat them." Like that that was kind of a more normal thing than it used than it is today, especially. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, now today you've got. Tennessee hiring Jeremy Pruitt off of Alabama staff. You've got Georgia hiring Kirby Smart off of Alabama staff. You kind of got some of the same stuff going on, but it wasn't uh, common. So, so, I mean, that, but that, those are iconic staffs and iconic guys, and when you win national championship after national championship, those guys are going to get poached. These weren't that, okay? No, no you're right. I'm, you know, that, that, this, this just wasn't, this wasn't that. This uh, wasn't and, and everybody's be, clamoring for those coaches that are coming out of Alabama. Right. To be fair, um, it you know, he didn't go straight from Alabama to Auburn, right? He he went from Auburn to East Carolina to Wyoming, and then back over to Auburn. Like it, that's the way it went. And but you had to work your way up to a job like Auburn. Uh, the game was different than the way it is today. It's completely today, different. you could be an OC yes. for one season, have a great year, and then you get poached by anybody. You got that right. You got that right. The last time that uh, that a, a coach that was as well-respected as that went straight from Alabama to Auburn was uh, Brother Oliver, Bill Oliver in 1995. Oh, yeah. For, yeah. Dude, I forgot all about him. That's oh, yeah. right. So it, he, I did forget all about and, him. And he didn't go to be a head coach. He no. went to be the defensive coordinator under Terry Bowden. Uh, That's right. Now, he eventually yeah, – he, he got Terry's yeah. – Yeah, now Terry got run out. Um, here we go. The Brown Yeti said, strengthen your team and weaken your rival. I love it. Yeah. No, but that, that was that was kind of the way things were done back then. Um. So I am I wrong on that? Like I I never feel super somber about seeing people who live these great, unbelievable storied lives and think, yes, rest I, in peace. And I mourn for their family and I feel bad for them, but this guy left a he, he lived a great life. And he left an and everlasting a long life, legacy. And like, and and he did big things and he saw incredible things. And I just think God, if I could do a, a, a fraction of that, I'll call my life a success and take me home, brother. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I just never, I never feel somber for those things. And maybe, maybe I should. I don't, I also don't really know how to grieve for I, things. Hey, so I'm, I'm, I'm in the same boost. boat. I, I don't know how to, how to cry. I don't know how to yeah. feel about I know how to cry. Things. I'm a huge cry baby, but it's different. It, like, this know. is not something that I would cry over. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of people that grew up, and, and Pat Dye was the coach when their fandom was established. 
You know, yes. and that's kind of a. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you deal. this. I'm going to bet there's a lot of players where Pat Dye was the father that they never had. Oh, I mean, hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, I mean, I look back at my life growing up, and when my grandfather died, and I got into sports, almost every coach I had, Coach Nut, in in Little League, Coach Pitch Baseball. Um, you know, God, you know, I spent my entire summers with his family, and he yeah. knew I didn't have a dad, and he. My mom worked two jobs and he picked me up and he made sure I was at practice and he got me home and he drove me to the tournaments and he did a, he didn't do that for any other player. Yep. Yeah, I so. remember. I remember it. I was on that team. So Yeah. Yeah. It was uh it was crazy. Uh let's see, Ben said, Well, yeah, you're a Batman fan. Of course you wouldn't cry. Well, no, <laughs> what I'm saying <laughs> What I'm saying is typically take all the Bama shots you want. Uh, yeah, Fair yeah, game. Yeah, hey. Absolutely knock yourself out. As long out as we're today. punching up, you're good. Uh, the Brown Yeti said, I'm with you, Chris. Death comes for all of us on this earth. It is the uh, the one thing that's for sure. Some are tragic. We yes. talked about one before we started the show. And then some are in celebration of man. What a fantastic it's, life. Now, if I'm his son, if I'm his grandchildren, great-grandchildren, yeah, that's today's a tough day, and I feel for them. I yeah. absolutely feel for them. And I'm not. The and like, so I think of... I can't think of Pat without Bo. That's it. I think of the guy that got me through everything, and I want it to be like I literally thought Superman was a real person oh, when yeah. I watched Bo Jackson. Oh, 100%. 100%. It, it, as an Alabama fan, I mean, even I have to uh, have to respect him because he was just unbelievable. And yeah, it was the I've same never thing seen with Pat anybody Dye. like that, and I've never seen anybody like that afterwards either. I, I mean, there's uh, a lot of people that try to compare freakishly studdish running backs to Bo. Bo came after Herschel. I didn't really get the Herschel stuff, but Herschel is a absolute yeah. monster and freak as well. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that. I just. But some of that's fandom. I'm gonna always ride with my guy over the other guy. But I've never seen anybody else do what he was able to do. Oh no, no, not at all, not at all. I was uh, I was lucky enough to be in attendance for Pat Dye's last football game as an Auburn head coach. There you and go. And. His players, they Alabama beat them seventeen to nothing. That was Gene Stallings' national championship year. Yeah, that was uh, the Miami was that, year, right? Uh, yeah, that was the year they beat Miami thirty four to thirteen. Sugar Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Sugar Bowl. Um, and it was it, it, Lord, it was the first like number two versus number one in like, five or six time. years. It had been a long time. Yes. Um, and it just happened to fall that way because of all the the bowl tie-ins. Yes, right. right. So, but uh, before but, yeah, the BCS, Pat and I. <laughs> You know, yes, they got beat seventeen to nothing. They went like five and six that year. It was not great. Yeah. Um, you know, it. But the players still respected him, still carried him off the field, and and they all knew that it was it was the end of his yeah. run there. Uh, it is an interesting thing. You don't see a lot of this anymore, and I think it's smart now, obviously. But Pat Dye being the athletic director at Auburn while he was the active head coach for ten well, years. It's organizations were much smaller then, which I'll tell you this, things weren't near, we, schools didn't have all the problems they had when they were a lot smaller governed. Okay? Agreed. Well, there also was now, not nearly as much money involved. Oh, no, they didn't have the dough. They didn't have the dough. The only reason, the only way you could pay a coach was to give him more jobs so you could basically give him two salaries. Yeah, you basically, yeah. That's it. That's, That's it. it. So, uh, all right, Dam let's jump. Damien, by the way, said all deaths are tragic except if Trump dies. Then that'll be a party. Oh, all right. Come on now. We're gonna, uh, you know we don't I talk don't politics. Wish death on anybody. You know we don't talk politics on this show. Good gracious. Come on, Damien. You better net. Uh, David Price. Let's talk. 